Gregor Arturo here with the Prometheus Initiative. What I'm going to talk about now is uh, magnetic flow, um, specifically with materials. There's three types of magnetic flow that um, I'm really interested in that I'm going to talk about. Ferromagnetism, paramagnetism, and diamagnetism. I'll start with ferromagnetism as most people are already familiar with it. Ferromagnetism is your traditional type of magnet. Yeah, one right here. Little neodymium magnet. And also, I got a little steel ball. Boom, boom. Your traditional little type of magnet. Um, the most common types of ferromagnetic substances is iron, as many people know, um, cobalt, and nickel. And they're all around the same numbers 26, 27, 28 in terms of atomic structure. Ferromagnetic substances are able to magnetize. In the presence of magnetic field, all the atoms within the substance will align in the same direction. Um, and there's a residue effect, in that when removed from the magnetic field, the atoms will stay aligned, um, and depending on how much strength of the magnetic field and pressure and temperature, um, all varying factors, how much of the magnetic magnetization the material will remain. Everyone's pretty much familiar with this. Uh, next one, paramagnetism. Paramagnetism, um, materials such as aluminum, aluminum is weakly paramagnetic, titanium is strongly paramagnetic, uh, chromium is paramagnetic, mm, there's, there's a few out there. Anyways, paramagnetic substances can magnetize too. However, it usually takes a stronger magnetic field to magnetize them. Not necessarily. Some some can magnetize easier than ferromagnetic substances. Um, but the thing is, as soon as the substance is removed from a magnetic field, it immediately goes back to its natural state. It cannot be permanently magnetized. There is no residue effect. And the third form of magnetism is diamagnetism, which most people are unaware of. This is the really interesting stuff. Okay, diamagnetism is pretty much everything else. And to give you an example of how to demonstrate an effect of diamagnetism, I can't do it myself, um, is if you take a really strong magnet and you stick it between your fingers, and it needs to be like a flat square, like really flat and thin, more surface area, you can stick it between your fingers and will levitate. Because hydrocarbons, organic life, for the most part, not always, for the most part are always diamagnetic. And water is diamagnetic, which is 70% of us. So, the human body, for the most part, is entirely diamagnetic. And if I held that little piece of a magnet between my fingers, I could levitate it, because diamagnetism is a repulsion almost, but not exactly. I'm going to explain this a little bit more. In that, if you had perfect diamagnetism, which happens in a superconductor, which is a whole other topic, um, basically means if you have a bring a magnet to a superconducting material because it's a perfect diamagnet, it will completely repel it, that all the atoms will magnetize in the opposing direction. However, um, there are no perfect diamagnets in nature, and everything is weakly diamagnetic. It's a very weak force, and that magnetism is mu ferromagnetism is much, much stronger. However, you can it's not technically true in terms of understanding diamagnetism and that it can be a much stronger force, especially in a ordered situation, as in with a vortex. Now, other substances that are diamagnetic are silver, copper, gold, bismuth. Bismuth is one of the most diamag is the most diamagnetic material on the planet. Um, naturally occurring material, besides pyroclitic car carbon, which is uh, a specific type of graphite and that's it otherwise carbon is very weakly diamagnetic now to throw some concepts out there in terms of why di diamagnetism is really cool is if you have a quartz crystal a little quartz crystal and quartz crystal is diamagnetic and then you get some more magnets, okay? And if we bring these two guys together, 
it's not got I'm not gonna you really can't even feel the repulsion. But you got these two guys together. Well, if you look at the tops, it's gonna get right there. Do, 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 do. Magnet and Christy. Now imagine that's your yin yang. That's exactly what it is. That's I call it like the yin yang effect. And that the energy starts increasing. You have the magnet um, rotation, which is essentially a vortex spinning in one direction, and then the um, crystal starts to create a vortice rotating in the opposite direction. And you get a yin yang effect. In turn, increases more energy in the system. The magnet actually becomes more powerful because of the diamagnetic substance. Now, this is where we get to start to play with some cool concepts, which I'm going to talk about more later. Uh, is there anything else I want to talk about? Diamagnetism? I will, but we're going we're to get into like the actual mechanical concepts and how to replicate the structure, but I need to get that concept out there. Um, there's one more type of substance I want to talk about, and that's dielectric. It has not to do with magnetic flow, but it's going to be talked about in another concept, uh, mechanical concept I'm going to bring forward. And dielectric is a, is a electrical insulator that's able to polarize the magnetic field. And what that means is the most common use is if you have a capacitor. So you have a plate and another plate. Let's say this one's positively charged and this one's negatively charged. So what that means is if you have a battery, say I'm the battery, okay, and the electricity is coming out my hand and it's getting negatively charged on one end, this one's getting positively charged on the other end, then in between is your your dielectric. Uh, what's a common di lead oxide? Lead oxide is a is a strong dielectric. If it was in between, also water and air. So in between, you would um, the material in between. So if this is negative and this is positive, then the material would polarize in the opposite direction. So it'd be positive. It'd be its positive direction would be that way, in between the plates. Well. Now to connect these concepts all together in terms of how it affects you right now is what I was just doing with my hands. If you guys know Reiki, right? I'm building an energy ball. Well, in between my hands, you start to create a singularity, a a, a vortex. Um, two vortexes actually collapsing in, on a single point, and you're creating a magnetic field. Everyone can do this. Just people aren't fully aware. Well, your hands are diamagnetic. So I have two diamagnetic vortices on, on one side with a um, magnetic field forming in the center. Also, that's why people pray. So you create a connection, you get flow going through your body. Well, when I pull them apart, I'm creating a natural capacitor. I'm getting energy to build up at one hand, one becoming a positive ion, one becoming a negative ion. And, you're, and air being a capacitor, the air becomes charge in the opposing direction and that's the basic simple concept we are energy so yeah that's the end of the discussion thank you